all the pipes and wow what a machine yeah it, it's uh it's pretty amazing when i took I our family like, through i can tell you they said wow a lot yeah i feel like i went back to college did about six years of college in a matter of about a month to two <laughs> months when we <laughs> Are you learning the, the health of the fish, too, or are you just focused on the mechanics of the machine? Everything. Everything. you got to be at your chair. Yep. <laughs> yep. At least for another six weeks. Yeah. Have you been inside the aquarium? I mean, inside the tank? Do you dive? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do dive. I have not dove the main tank because we've got a zebra shark that's a little bit finicky with some of our our yeah. divers, and I'd rather not risk that one. But an absolute <laughs> fantastic problem to have at work. Can't go in because of the shark. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. But uh, but it's it's a fantastic facility for sure. Yeah, we love it. Hey, if Joel can hear me, we're live now. I was only guessing that may not have been the challenge. <coughs> Bob, I saw you on TV last week about your food truck court. I can't tell whose lips moved. Who said that? That was, that was Phil. Okay. Yeah, I saw you on TV and they, they were interviewing you about your uh, food truck court. Uh, I think there's a lot of excitement about it. I really do. <clears throat> we were at a baseball game last night and I heard some people in the stands behind us talking about it. Uh, I think it was a fabulous idea when the commission passed the ordinance and uh, I'm glad to be taking advantage of it first for our, our theater organization but there's a lot of excitement. Food cut court, uh, food truck courts are very popular. Vice Chairperson Davis. Yes. We Director are. We are Oregon. live. We are streaming. We are good. We are ready to start the meeting. Apologize for the You're delay. Ready. YouTube. Was, YouTube was giving us fits. Technology works. It's good when it does. All right then. Uh, well, as you, I think the commission. Uh, must know that uh, our uh, long-standing chairman, uh, Clark Harris, has turned in his resignation. And as vice chairman, I will uh, be running the meeting, or at least the first portion of it this evening. And uh, I just want to, uh, at the end of the meeting, might, uh, if you have comments to make uh, for uh, thanks for Clark Harris's 25 years of service, that's noteworthy. And uh, with that in mind, uh, I'll try to follow in his footsteps this evening. So let's call the meeting to order and we'll start with the roll call, please. Joel. Thank you, Vice Chairperson. We'll now take the roll call. Commissioner Romine. Yes, here. Commissioner O'Day. Here. Commissioner Richards. Here. Commissioner Howden. Here. Commissioner Pinkley? Here. Commissioner Lloyd? Here. Vice Chairperson Davis? Here. Commissioner Nichols? Here. And Alderwoman Denham? Here. I members present, we have a quorum. Thank you. All right, very well. Uh, Joel, do we have anybody signed up to speak uh, on the public comment section of this meeting tonight, May 4th, 2021? We do not. All right. In that case, then, I think we must be ready to move into our regular agenda. And uh, item number one on the regular agenda is approval of the Planning Commission minutes from the April 6th, 2021 regular meeting. Do I hear a motion uh, regarding those minutes? So moved. This is Pinkley. Pinkley? Oh, second. second. This is Lloyd. We have a second on Lloyd. Uh, I had 
I was not in attendance at that meeting. I had one minor observation that I wanted just to make sure to clear up with uh, since uh, Bob Nichols, uh, Commissioner Nichols, uh, was a presenter at the meeting that night. Uh, as someone who wasn't in the, in the meeting read the, uh, the minutes, I would see that, that Commissioner Nichols was not in attendance, but did appear at the meeting and uh, made presentation. Just wanted to make sure that, uh, that this body felt like that the minutes clearly represented the fact that uh, Commissioner Nichols was uh, not uh, in uh, concerned with or not in violation of uh, conflict of interest uh, rules regarding that particular situation. And I don't know that it was clear enough for me to understand that. So I was wondering if, uh, if Joel or uh, uh, Chris uh, Levesque would uh, recommend that we add a point of clarification there that Mr. Nichols was present in the capacity as an applicant and not as a commissioner. I agree with you, uh, Commissioner Davis, that was not made clear even when I read it myself. It looked like I was in attendance as a commissioner. And uh, if it's possible to add a comment to the minutes, I would appreciate that clarification. I think it'd be a good idea, Commissioner Agreed. Nichols, too. Good we will happily. What I would recommend is that we somebody make a motion to amend the minutes, somebody second that motion and then a vote to amend the minutes to properly reflect Commissioner Nichols' capacity and his role that evening. I'll make that Thank motion you, that um, it is clearly identified uh, Commissioner Nichols as a, an applicant and not a participant in the meeting. So that removes any kind of conflict that anyone could misconstrue in reading the minutes even five years from now, let alone current. I'll second that motion. We have a motion from Commissioner Romine, a second from Commissioner Pinkley regarding that issue of the minutes. Is there any further discussion on that amendment? Hearing none, uh, we would like to have a vote. Planner Phillips. Thank you, Vice Chairperson. I'll now open vote. Commissioner Romine? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Howden? Yes. Commissioner Pinkley? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Vice Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? I believe I should abstain. Uh, no, you can vote on minutes, I think, actually. But my uh, involvement in the uh, amendment is not relevant. And if it's not, then I vote yes. Alderwoman Denham. Yes. Close vote. Motion is carried. Thank you. So now we have in front of us a motion that's been amended that we need to proceed to a final uh, vote on unless there are any additional uh, modifications that the commission would like to make. Do I hear any additional uh, amendments? Hearing none, let's uh, please vote on the amended motion uh, to accept or approve the planning commission minutes from April 6th as amended. So moved, Howden. Second. Second, Pinkley. Okay. Planner Phillips, we can vote. Thank you, Vice Chairperson. Just one moment, I'll take loads.
Okay, forgive me. Motions? It was uh, motioned by sure. Howden and seconded by Pinkley. Thank you. And I'll take vote. Commissioner Romine? Yes. Commissioner O'Day? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Howden? Yes. Commissioner Pinkley? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Vice Jefferson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderwoman Denham? Yes. Vote is closed. Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you, Leonard Phillips. And so uh, item number two on our agenda, Joel, you want to explain our election of chairperson and vice chairperson to us? Yes. Uh, so per the, plan the planning commission's bylaws, uh, the May meeting is established as the time for voting in an annual chairperson and vice chairperson. Um, we will be doing that as we always do anonymously um, once nominations are made. Um, we've talked to several of you, I think. Uh, we may have missed a couple of you. Apologies, but we're going to utilize the chat function on Zoom tonight. Um, we would just ask that when you do send that, um, be sure that it is directed or sent to just me, uh, Joel Hornicle, um, when you send that chat, and then we will tally the results um, at that time, and I will announce um, the results of the election. Uh, does the commission have any questions of Joel uh, before we begin this uh, process of assigning the person that's going to run the meetings for this year ahead? Joel? All right, hearing none then, uh, as vice chairman running the meeting, I would like to open the floor for nominations for the role of chairperson for this calendar for this year. I would like to uh, nominate Rick Davis for chairman, Romine. I would accept that nomination. Other nominations? Hearing none, then we'll. Uh, do we need a motion to close the nominations? Attorney Lebeck? Please. No, you don't need a motion. You can just close the nominations as the presiding officer. Thank you. Uh, therefore, I'll close the nominations for chairman. Uh, and it looks like that I will lead the meetings this year. So. Uh, in this case, when there are, uh, um, real quick, uh, Chairperson yeah. Davis, I think there still needs to be a vote. Um, yes. To get to that point, um, the motion is not required to close the nomination period, but I think there still needs to be a vote to put you into that position, if we want to do this formally. Thank you. So we'll continue with the process of voting as planned. Correct. Correct. All right. Thank you. Uh, so then moving to item election, uh, election item B for the vice chairperson, I would now open the floor for nominations for vice chairperson for the 2021 Planning and Zoning Commission year. Um, I'd like to make a motion to nominate Commissioner Howden as vice chairperson. Thank you. The nomination was made by Alderwoman Denham. Do I hear other uh, nominations from the commission? Yes, I'd like to nominate uh, O'Day, Commissioner O'Day, please. I hear a nomination for Commissioner O'Day from Commissioner Romine. Uh, first off, Commissioner Heldon, are you willing to serve in this capacity? Yes, sir. Commissioner O'Day, are you willing to serve in this capacity? 
Yes, sir. Do I hear any other nominations by the commission? Hearing none, then uh, I will close the uh, nominations for vice chairman. And at this time, uh, I'll ask Director Hornicle to lead us through the voting process, starting with the vote for chairperson. Okay. At this time, if you would all send a chat message directly to me uh, with your selection for chairperson, we will do that first. Well, I've got a challenge. This is Mr. Lloyd. I don't see how I even put any name on here or how I vote. I see the chat. You, you would just type, you would type it in? You would type in the name you'd like? I don't get when I'm looking at the screen, though. I don't see the opportunity to chat, though. It doesn't. Uh... Is it down at the bottom, Phil? Okay, I'm going now. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Notice that after you type it's type it in where it says type message here, then you have to hit enter. Yeah. Correct. And just be sure to select Joel and because default is all. Yep. Correct. We we have we have received nine responses and they're all for uh, Rick Davis. So Chairperson Davis, it's your meeting. All right, then. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's continue uh, our efforts with the now election for vice chairperson. Director Hornicle, would you lead us through that, please? Yes, again, uh, the two nominations for vice chairperson are Commissioner Howden and Commissioner O'Day. If you would please send your responses directly to me now, we will tally the results. We have eight responses. Is there one person that hasn't provided a response that would like to? Can you, do you know who's missing? Yeah. Oh, it just popped in. I apologize. We got them all. I missed one up above. <laughs> um, so with the result of six to three, uh, Commissioner O'Day is the vice chairperson. Congratulations, Commissioner O'Day. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank, Thank you, you, Joel, for making a cumbersome technology task into one that wasn't too bad after all. Now, we're ready to move on, ladies and gentlemen, with the rest of the agenda. And we're gonna start now with our section on public hearings. Tonight, we're fortunate enough to have uh, several public hearings. And the first of which deals with a low density residential zoning request for property located at 631 Shady Drive in the city limits of Branson, Missouri. Director Hornicle, would you take us through this application and report yes. on your recommendation, please? Yes, thank you, Chair Chairperson Davis. Um, as mentioned, this request is a zoning request to establish zoning on a recently annexed property or a pro property currently going through that process. And it is located at 631 Shady Drive, which is a part of the Taney Como Heights subdivision. Um, our owner is Andy's LLC, and the applicant who provided the request 
um, who is part of Andy's LLC is Catherine Kendrick. And the specific request is to establish low density residential uh, for the property. Uh, we have a, a street view image here on the screen. Uh, as you can see, there's not much going on on the property. It's very much undeveloped and, and wooded at this time. Uh, next, we move into our vicinity maps. Uh, the first one being our overhead vicinity map with utility locations shown. Um, we have outlined the subject property in purple in the middle of your screen. And you can see those properties that are currently within the city limits uh, where you can see the aerial and where it's washed out or whited out. Uh, those are properties that are outside the city limits. The next vicinity map is our current zoning. Um, the yellow, which is to the north of the subject property is also low density residential. And then the cyan or blue to the south, um, that's also contiguous to the subject property. That's a planned development, the Fall Creek uh, Resort. Next is the proposed zoning or the request of the applicant this evening, which is the low density residential. And then our vicinity map showing existing land uses in the area uh, with predominantly low density residential to the north. And then you can see vacant property part of the Fall Creek Resort to the south, uh, as well as uh, lodging and a little bit of high density residential there along the lake. We also include our four orthometric views um, if we need those for reference during tonight's meeting. So getting to the request itself, as I mentioned, they are in the annexation process. They requested an annexation back in March of this year. The petition was presented and accepted by the Board of Aldermen during their April 13th meeting, and they approved it on its first reading at their past meeting on April 27th. As a result, the final reading is tentatively scheduled at their next meeting, May the 11th. As I mentioned previously, this property is currently undeveloped and wooded. Uh, the applicant is proposing to construct a single family residence within the, or within the property and therefore connect to the city's sewer system. Uh, this request would establish zoning for this property, which is reflective and complementary of both the proposed use as well as the adjacent uses as we saw in our land use map. Uh, to the right, you will notice the future land use map out of our community plan 2030. Uh, because this property was not annexed in at that time, um, it, it is not referenced on this graphic. However, you can see um, the properties in the yeah, vicinity of this property do match the low again. density residential. Well, oh, it keeps turning off. Yeah. As a result, the staff recommends approval. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Joel. Uh, do the commissioners have any questions directed at uh, Director Hornicle at this time? Joel is the applicant. Is Catherine with us this evening? Uh, we actually have Matt with us this evening. Matt Kendrick. Okay, uh, Matt, if you're if you're with us, uh, please join in. And if you'd like to tell us about your plans here, we would welcome to hear them. Good evening, um, Commission. So yeah, um, just to um, go off what Joel said, we have plans to build a two-story home. Um, square footage is approximately 20, uh, 2,690 square feet, three bedroom, three bath, um, just a nice lot that we would like to build a house on. Um, and then um, potentially, well, we do live in Branson. We've lived in Branson for four years. Um, we consider this our home. Um, we may buy this house and move into it. We live on Lake Drive right now currently, or we may decide to sell it. We haven't decided that yet. Thank you for that uh, synopsis. Commissioners, any questions for Matt Kendrick? <laughs> well, we were talking earlier, Matt, about the inflating prices of, uh, of mm -hmm. uh, construction materials. So sure. uh, we, we hope you have your workaround plan for that. We definitely do. Thank you for, uh, for that. Um, yes, um, we're hoping that, that the price of uh, materials do start to come down a little bit. I think the projection is that they will, so hopefully soon. Uh, I'm gonna come back to Director Hornicle for a moment. Uh, Joel, has uh, Matt uh, uh, 
been aware of uh, the regulations of, uh, of water, sewer, uh, and all of the different uh, building codes for the city of Branson? Yes, yes, they, they're very much aware, and we've, we've discussed that process, and um, I'm very comfortable they understand. Do you have any questions about any of those issues, Matt, at this time? No, sir, I do not. All right. In that case, uh, Chair would entertain a motion, a request for approval for low density residential zoning for the property located at 631 Shady Drive, Branson. This is referred to as resolution number Z021-5. So moved, Nichols. Thank you, Second. Commissioner Nichols. Was that Commissioner Richards? Nicholas? Yes. Oh, I didn't hear the second. My apologies. Commissioner Richards was the second on that. Yes, sir. Any further discussion on the part of the commission? Hearing none, let's go to the vote. Thank you, Chairperson Davis, on open vote. Thank Commissioner you, Romine? Phillips. Yes. Vice Chairperson Davis, oh, excuse me, O'Day? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Howden? No. Yes, sorry, yes. Commissioner Pinkley? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderwoman Denham? Yes. Vote is closed. Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you, Planner Phillips. Congratulations. You're all set to go from this perspective. We Thank wish you, you good much. luck. Thank you. We wish you good luck, Matt. Thank you very much, Commissioner. All right. Thank you, Joel. Uh, next item on our agenda is a request for high density residential HDR zoning for property located at 1487 North State Highway 265 in Branson, Missouri. Joel, you wanna take us through this one, please? Excuse me, Chairperson Davis? Yes. I need to recuse myself from item four. I'm involved in the project, so. Thank you, Commissioner Richard. Uh, please let the minutes reflect that Commissioner Richards has uh, recused himself and will not participate in discussion or vote in this item. All right, uh, Chairperson Davis, if it'd be all right, we have a, a guest in our waiting room that just is by a phone number and I wanna double check that which item they're here for, if that's all right. Sure, and uh, if, if it's more, if it's less awkward to have them join in on the front end, Joel, please correct the order of the, of the meeting and have me do it earlier. Yeah, no, we, um, Matt was able to join us at the start of their item. Okay. Um, so we've just let in a phone number uh, starting with 817 ending with 020. Just wanted to know which item you're here for this evening. And you'll need to unmute. Otherwise, we'll need to return you back to the waiting room if we don't get a response. Okay, they've hung up. So I guess that they <laughs> were not interested in being in the meeting. So we can continue on. Um, as you mentioned, this is a request, another zoning request. Uh, this property at 1487 State Highway 265. Uh, the owner is Lifestyle Contractors LLC, and the applicant is an employee that uh, provided the application of Lisa Allen. And more specifically, the request is for high density residential or HDR. Again, we have a Google Street View image showing the property. Once again, this is an undeveloped piece of property. The next is our overhead vicinity map. Um, just as I described below, uh, showing those properties uh, with the aerial that are within the city limits and those that are not yet in the city limits shown with the whitewash or transparent view. 
and the subject property outlined in purple there on the west side of State Highway 265. Next is our vicinity map showing current zoning. Um, you'll notice the properties to the south that this property is a part of uh, are zoned high density residential already currently today. And then there are also properties on both the to the east and to the west that are currently zoned agricultural. And then the next slide showing what the proposed zoning would look like in its context. And then our existing land use map um, showing the property is mostly within the area is vacant. However, you do notice the two uh, to the southwest that are currently lodging properties or providing nightly rental. And then we've got our orthometric views in case we need them for reference. And then getting into the details, uh, this was an annexation requested back in March on the 10th of this year. The petition was accepted and acknowledged by the board during their meeting on March the 23rd. The first reading was passed by the Board of Aldermen on April the 27th, which has set the final reading tentatively for their next meeting on May the 11th. This request is then to establish zoning, which is reflective and complementary of the uses proposed for this property, as well as uh, the adjacent uses of their properties to the south. Uh, this particularly would be phase two of, of the development known as Chateau Mountain, uh, which they plan to do nightly rental structures just as they have currently going on in phase one, as well as in their development Chateau Cove, even further to the south. As I mentioned during the previous item, uh, showing the future land use map to the right there out of the community plan 2030, um, these properties are not shown as they were not annexed at that time. Um, but still is compliant with the mixed use uh, that is shown in this area. As a result, staff recommends approval and happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Director Hornicle. Uh, does the commission have any uh, questions directed to uh, Director Hornicle at this time? Joel, have you uh, had any comments come in regarding this uh, zoning request from the public? No. We, we have not received any, no. Are there any members of the public present at our meeting tonight that would like to speak regarding this zoning request? <clears throat> um, no, we don't see anybody waiting in the waiting room, nor did we get any um, comments through the website to, for speaking either. Thank you. Do we have an applicant w wishing to tell us anything about this tonight? Uh, again, unfortunately, we don't have anybody joining in the waiting room uh, on behalf of this item. Thank you. In that case, uh, I will chair would, would request a uh, motion to approve uh, this request for high density residential HDR zoning for the property located at 1487 North State Highway 265, Branson, Missouri, uh, otherwise known as resolution number Z021-3. Commissioner Lloyd will make that motion. Commissioner Lloyd has made the motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second from Romine. Romine makes that second. Is there any further discussion? In that case, we would call for a vote, please. Leonard Phillips. Chairperson Davis. Now opening vote. Commissioner Romine? Yes. Vice Chairperson O'Day? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Um, I had to recuse. Oh, so excuse me. I don't. Still in here. Okay. Moving on, Commissioner Howden? Yes. Commissioner Pinkley? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderwoman Denham? Yes. Vote is closed. Motion has carried. Thank you, Planner Phillips. Uh, moving on now, we have 
an additional request. This time it's a special use permit uh, for operation of a restaurant within a drive through facility uh, located at 550 Branson Landing Boulevard, Branson, Missouri. Director Hornicle, would you explain this one to us, please? Yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, this property, as you mentioned, the address is located within the Lakeview Terrace subdivision. Um, it is up on Branson Landing Boulevard there on the east side of the road. The owner is B5 Properties, LLC, and Mr. Dennis Blind of Olson has made the request on behalf of the owner. Uh, the current zoning of the property is neighborhood commercial, and the applicant's request is to operate a restaurant or a coffee shop with a drive through We've got a Google Earth Street View image here showing the property. Um, you see the, the two businesses here up on Branson Landing Boulevard there on the east side of the road. The oh, there we go. <laughs> Moving on to our vicinity maps, we've got the subject properties outlined in purple. Um, you will notice that it's, it's two separate properties currently on the east side of Branson Landing Boulevard. The next is a vicinity map showing the current zoning of neighborhood commercial uh, with community commercial located to the west across Branson Land Boulevard and then low density residential to the east. Next is the existing land use uh, and showing the subject property does have commercial on it as well as office. Uh, there's other office properties in the area as well as some vacant uh, and then the low density residential properties to the east. Our orthometric views, again, if, if necessary for reference. And then into the specifics. Uh, so again, talking about existing conditions of the property, we do have two existing structures on the two properties, as well as an unimproved shared parking area between them. Um, Michelle's flower, floral and gifts is the building to the north that is set to remain at this time. And then the former farmer's insurance building, or the, the building on the south end, um, is slated to be demolished to make way for this improved improvement to the property. The applicant has submitted a minor subdivision plat to the city uh, back on April the 6th. Uh, that initial request was to combine the properties um, to alleviate any setback conflicts that they would have by the placement of the building. Um, then the Scooters Coffee itself uh, is being proposed, as I said, with a drive through the building will be proposed at 641 square feet with the drive-through window located on the north side of the building or to the side. Uh, the stacking lanes uh, are around the building on its north, east, and south side, or otherwise there are two sides in the rear. They are showing uh, enough for seven spaces, queuing spaces within that drive-through. Um, the city only requires six. So they're providing one more than what's required. Uh, the menu board uh, position is shown to the east or again in the rear yard of the property. Uh, the, the property itself is located uh, approximately 1,000 feet from the nearest intersection, uh, as well as on Branson Landing Boulevard, which is a five lane arterial road. So that's positive. Uh, they are proposing to improve the existing parking area. This would make it a paved surface uh, with curbing and guttering and would provide six new parking spaces, um, which would be five regular spaces and one handicap space. As a result of, of these things, they would be in compliance uh, with the city's zoning code in chapter 94, um, as well as the buffering requirements in section 94-101, as there's an existing 60 foot buffer along the east side of the property, um, which not only is vegetated today, but also uh, is, is quite significant in elevation um, between those properties on Branson Landing Boulevard and those to the east that are currently zoned low density residential. Um, here is a site plan um, for you all to see. Uh, the Scooters Coffee proposed building is, is shown there with the hatch around it and as well as the square footage inside. Uh, the queuing, as I mentioned, starts at the drive through window on the north side of the building there where the first car is located and then goes around the building in a clockwise fashion for the seven spaces they have noted. They are showing a new dumpster area uh, in the northeast portion of the property that would be behind uh, the floral business. 
They've also delineated uh, the circulation of the drive through as well as a new in and out ingress egress entrance uh, to both properties on the north side. Um, we did work with the applicant uh, quite a bit back and forth on, on some fine tuning of the site plan. So we really appreciate their efforts um, and, and the site plan is in a good, a good position at this time. There's also an image of the proposed building here on this page as well as some elevations here on the next couple of pages for your information and reference. So as a result of this information, staff does recommend approval of the request. However, based on the following conditions, number one, all construction and activities covered by the special use permit shall conform to all codes and ordinances of the city. And number two, lots one, two, and three of block C of the Lakeview Terrace subdivision shall be combined through a minor subdivision plat. And number three, if all conditions of this resolution authorizing the issuance of this special use permit are not acted upon or before May 4th, 2022, then this special use permit shall be null and void. Thank you and happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Director Hornicle. Does the commission have any specific questions for Joel at this time regarding this special use permit? Chairperson Davis, I do. Um, Joel, yes. my question is going to be related to um, traffic study, and you know that's being a major, pretty major artery with Branson Landing Boulevard and heading north, and knowing the traffic patterns that we have, knowing what we see from, for example, another coffee shop downtown Branson, where cars are lined up to pull into the facility on on the city street and not necessarily you know on the property is that a concern and have we done any type of study in relation to that we have not done an official study um the the six cars in the queuing is is kind of our minimum standard uh, to provide what we believe is, is sufficient space for drive-through traffic as i mentioned the applicant has provided seven spaces um, that would be seven spaces that are set back at least 25 feet from the right-of-way. So technically, there is room for another space. Um, so they have eight full spaces within their property. Um, the benefit of Branson Landing Boulevard being five lanes is there is a, a, an opportunity for people to queue and still have the opportunity, those not queuing, to move around um, anybody that would be waiting um, and so we felt like that was uh, enough um, to, to kind of ease our concerns that, like you, we had as well uh, in reviewing this early on. Um, the, the middle lane, the middle turn lane of Branson Landing Boulevard does also offer potential for, for queuing if, if necessary beyond the eight. Anybody that's moving southbound on Branson Landing Boulevard, they would have that opportunity. Um, you know, Director Francis and I have talked about this as recently as today. Um, someone making a left turn out of the drive through that will be more of a challenge um, to go southbound on Bran Branson Lane Boulevard than to turn right and to head north. Um, but again, we, we feel comfortable with it given all the things that I've, I've just gone over. Thank you, Joel. So this is Commissioner Lloyd. Uh, Commissioner Joel, Lloyd? This is up by the um, hospital. Where is this? Across from the hospital. Um, so let me go back to the let me go back to the vicinity map here. Um, so the hospital is um, further south from the subject property and on the other side of Branson Laney Boulevard. So this property is approximately halfway between the hospital and the interchange at Highway 65 on the east side of the road. Okay. This uh, this is just for the commission and an FYI. I've, I've observed this over a couple of times at the out on 248. And 248 has its challenges. We've got some bad um, access roads and egress roads, and it's a little bit dangerous at times. But our newest building out there is the um, uh, car wash by uh, Colbert's um, restaurant. And on a big on a big car wash day, they back up in that middle turn lane to go into this place, 
And if you come out, and I'm going to call it the Bob Patrick subdivision, which is right beside the Cox Medical Center there, you cannot turn left because cars are backed up waiting to go in the car wars. So um, 248 has had enormous growth and it has a lot of speed on the highway there and it's kind of got dangers in some places. And this I think will be fine because we don't have the speed there at least. So I hope people can be cautious enough to maneuver this well. But Joel, that's just an FYI of something I've observed on 248. Thank you. Other commissioner comments to Joel? Joel, uh, Commissioner Davis here. I have a, a follow-up question about uh, Commissioner O'Day's observation of the concern for stacking and traffic. Is there any precedent in the code for side-by-side -side stacking uh, so that you could essentially double the number of cars in the driveway in there in high density or, or high volume businesses like this? It, it's definitely up to the applicant how they want to configure their drive through um, so long as they do meet the city's minimum standards for stacking, um, which, which they have plus exceeded in, in this example. Does our city prevent uh, alternative approaches to stacking, such as two cars side by side through the lane? No, we, we would not prevent that. Um, again, that would just be up to the applicant. And then uh, another question regarding the frontage, uh, the uh, business 65 frontage, where's the pedestrian way on this site plan? Um, so if you look at the site plan that I've pulled back up on the presentation, um, you can see the double line, um, that, that's the new curbing. And then there's a hatched area that you can see, um, which would be um, like a grass or turf, I believe. And then just next to that would be uh, the sidewalk. And that's actually existing sidewalk um, that's already there today. Um, and it looks like if they were to disturb that within the right of way that it would be, it, it would be required to be put back the way it is today. That ramped or ADA accessible there should be? Uh, it, it, it should be, and, and I'm sure our, our friends in public works and engineering will make sure of it during construction that it remains that way. Uh, we have some, I think, some uh, folks uh, joining us tonight uh, for this in the area of the applicant, Mr. Blind, and I believe uh, possibly Mr. Brink are here. Uh, is uh, Ms. Williford here as well to join in the discussion? Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Kim Williford. I'm with Scooters Coffee. Uh, so I represent the brand corporately and also with us, uh, Ed Brink. So Ed Brink is actually our franchisee for this location. So he will be the owner operator for this site. Um, everything that, that Joel mentioned are definitely things that we've been working towards together. Uh, one thing I would like to point out for stacking, if you, if you look at the vehicles that we're showing in our stacking lane, uh, so we... We, we're showing something different than what you might see from other people. Um, others might show the smallest cars that they can to show as many cars as they can. Uh, we're showing some, something different. So these are actually Ford F-250 pickup trucks, which are the 24-foot long trucks. Um, and we do that to, to ensure that we get the right turning radius so that anyone can get through our site. Uh, so we are able to provide a lot more car stacking on the property whenever you start looking at the differences and between vehicles you know i mean a jeep grand cherokee is around 16 feet you know and then the ford f-250 is 24 feet so that gives you a little bit of an idea here just to alleviate some of those concerns that we will actually be able to get more cars on this site than what it looks like also uh scooters coffee as a brand um since we are a drive-through only concept our concept is all about speed and convenience. So we make sure that we're getting our customers through that drive through. Um, we average ticket times between 30 and 45 seconds. Um, by the time you order at the menu box and you get to the window, your drinks in there waiting for you. So we've made sure that we've optimized our internal operations as well as our menu to make sure that we keep our customers moving and that they're not sitting in a queue line. Thank you for that uh, explanation, Kimberly. 
would you, uh, comparative to other scooter sites, would you say this site is of common size with uh, the common amount of parking and or stacking uh, that you have at other sites? Yes, sir, it is. So we, we typically require at least six cars in our stacking lane, uh, which, is, which gives us the right number so that it keeps people moving. Um, so that's what we've seen typically in this, this location that Ed's going to have here in Branson is actually one of our newer, larger kiosks. So the capacity for this building is very high. Um, we have other locations that are, that are running our much smaller, uh, non-optimized buildings and, and they're, they're cranking cars through and they're, they're, they're beating those records every day as far as their timing. It's kind of a competition amongst our locations to, to make sure that that they're that they're getting those cars through fast and that people aren't waiting. So this is pretty standard for what we have. Uh, we see a lot of locations that are going into these smaller sites, which is a great thing, you know, for us to be able to to take on these smaller sites within cities that that may otherwise sit vacant and and um, for lack of better word, you know, not attractive. <laughs> so <laughs> we're like we like to be able to come in and be able to. To improve upon these sites. Thank you. Uh, you uh, you're representing the company. Is that correct? Did I understand you to say you're the representative? Yes, sir. So I'm the I'm the in-house architect for Scooters Coffee. Okay. Uh, as you know, then as part of the special use permit, Joel presented three different items that were conditions of the special use permit. Are you aware of those, and do you agree to all of them? We are aware of them. Um, there, there is one question on the, the replat as far as the condition of it being combined into one site. I believe that we had had a discussion about it being divided into two sites versus one. So I just wanted to make sure, see if that was an option or, or if we, we're, we're fine either way. We just wanted to make sure which way we needed to go on that. Joel, could you respond to that question? Yes, we, we have discussed that with the applicant. Uh, staff's uh, primary goal with that condition is, is to make sure that the, the setback conflicts are, are um, basically addressed and taken care of, um, and they would be able to do that by, by moving that property line uh, just as much as they would by removing it. Um, so that, that would be up to the applicant, and we, we are more than willing to work with them through that process. Yeah, currently with the three lots, the, the lot lines sit underneath the existing flower shop building. So we're trying to clean it up to make sure that, that those lot lines make more sense and, and that we, we aren't non-conforming on, on where the, the subdivision plat is. Thank you. Uh, would, we, uh, would we have any input from uh, Mr. Blind or Mr. Brink tonight? My name is Ed Brink. I'm the, I'm the owner of the properties in question. Uh, my, well, wife, my wife, Deb, and I uh, own them, and our goal is to build a nice building, obviously, but quite frankly, we share the same concerns that some of the commissioners have voiced here. That is a very high traffic road, which is a plus and a minus, I guess, uh, in looking at this, but we do think that we, we have, as, as Kim indicated, we, we've really tried to maximize the stacking so that we can avoid having them back out into the street as much as possible. Um, it, we're, we're very impressed with the, with the people that we've worked with with the city thus far. They've been very good to work with. Uh, and we want to, from our perspective, we want to be very good to work with too. We want to build a nice property, operate a good business and be a good corporate citizen. Uh, so we're, I would ask that you approve the special use permit uh, but I'm, I'm certainly happy to work with the, the planners and, and make this a conforming property and as nice as we can make it. So thank you. Thank you for your, your input and presentation, Ed. Uh, one question that we always ask of the applicant is, uh, are you comfortable with the uh, finishing the project by May 4th of 2022? Yes, actually my goal or Deb and I's goal is to have the property uh, the existing building demolished as soon as we can. We're in, we're in the bid process on that right now. Um, and our goal is to have the new scooters built, staffed, and up and, 
and running by the end of the year. Wonderful. And do we have any comments from Mr. Blind? I, I do not believe that, that Mr. Blind is with us tonight. Okay. Commissioners have any questions for uh, Ed or Kim? Thank you folks for attending. Uh, mm -hmm. At this point then, uh, do the commissioners have any other questions of staff? Hearing none, Chair would entertain a motion for request for approval for special use permit to operate a restaurant with a drive-through within the properties located at 550 Branson Landing Boulevard, Branson, Missouri, hereby known as resolution number SU21-2. So move, Pinkley. Have a motion for approval from Commissioner Pinkley. Do I hear a second? Second, Nichols. Have a second from Commissioner Nichols. Any further discussion on the part of the commission? Hearing none, please do a roll call vote. Planner Phillips. Thank you, Chairperson. I'll now open vote. Commissioner Romine? Yes. Vice Chairperson O'Day? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Howden? Yes. Commissioner Pinkley? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderwoman Denham? Yes. Vote, vote is closed. Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, congratulations. Get on to work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Uh, we're now ready to move on to the uh, last of our items on our public hearing list today. And that is uh, item six, which is a code amendment, a revisit of a code amendment for chapter 94. Joel, do you wanna bring us up to date on this uh, modification to a prior action that this board took? Yeah, um, we have provided uh, a lot of the same information that we've presented to you earlier. Um, just to, to simply highlight that as we get into it, um, this was an item that you all asked for staff to take a look at uh, dealing with recreational vehicles. Um, there are a couple of chapters that reference them today, um, but the biggest thing being that they, they're not allowed to be at establishments overnight um, at this point under the current code. Um, Specifically, we also did have a couple requests made from one applicant last year that were denied um, to be able to have the ability to have a, a vehicle park within a theater. So all of that led to the staff's work of reaching out to the theaters within the community, um, 35 to be exact, through a survey that we did in December. Um, again, just kind of the highlights on this screen of the results um, that we then utilized to provide to you a recommendation that we presented during the March Planning Commission meeting. Um, our normal process, we then took it right to the board um, for their meeting on March the 23rd. Um, however, there were some concerns expressed from one of the aldermen um, that staff needed to uh, incorporate more uh, stakeholders from the community into this process um, and take another look at it. Um, and they, they postponed that item till their, uh, their second meeting here in May. Um, so we thought the best way um, to get the community's involvement was to put this item back on your agenda and invite the public uh, to speak uh, or to weigh in. Um, we, we reached out to 42 um, contacts through the theater, um, theater contacts that we have, as well as um, through the Branson Academy for the Advancement of Music and Theater, as well as the Branson Show League via their executive director, Sue Braun. Um, we distribute that opportunity for, for them to weigh in. Um, and, and through all that, we received a single comment, um, which I can read to you all at this point. Um, that single comment was provided from Debbie Wills, uh, and it is, I am a show owner, 
theater leasee, and a touring artist. If a theater has an artist touring through Branson, they should have the right as a show owner and or property owner to allow the artist to stay at their venue. No one is asking for permanent residency or long-term living arrangements in their parking lots. The past meeting I streamed, the city presented charging for temporary or permanent permits as a solution to request since the current law does not allow any RV parking. If it is not allowed, yet being requested by theaters, can the law not be stricken and rewritten to allow property owners to ascertain their own needs and provide the temporary parking for their steam touring guests without government overreach? There is zero need for the city to create permits or fees, thereby prospering from a property owner being a gracious host. The theater owner is already footing the bill for the thousands of dollars in marketing the event, promoting the event, hosting the event, and staffing the event. Shame on the city for wanting to charge the theater show owner even more to run their business. Touring artists through Branson are not animals. They are not going to dump their tanks in a theater parking lot. They are not going to destroy the property they are parked on. From personal experience, I can attest the touring artist is going to pay local business to dump and fill their tanks. They are grateful for a quiet, safe place to park and rest after and between shows. In closing, if RV parking for touring artists is illegal, it should not be illegal, and there should be no government involvement in allowing it to happen. Change the law, trust your show and theater owners, and enjoy great shows for hardworking people. Thank you. As I mentioned, so that was the, the comment we received. Um, so going into the actual proposed code language, um, we are still proposing a new definition for motorhome and recreational motor vehicle, as you can see here, same ones as before. However, on the second screen, we've highlighted some changes that staff has reconsidered and proposed to you tonight. You'll notice under theater, um, where we had overnight parking for one recreational motor vehicle or motorhome shall comply with the following regulations, we've changed that to two. Um, we've increased that amount, therefore allowing any theater um, without any requests needed, without any permitting to be made, um, to be allowed at any point to have two recreational motor vehicles within their property. So long as, as Roman numeral one points out, they're located within an approved off-street parking area and to the rear side of the primary structure. So we've stricken the limit on occurrences per year and the maximum days per occurrence. And then you'll notice the final strikeout that we've done is under special use standards. Um, we've simply, just as we did above, changed that threshold from one to two. So any theater wanting to have more than two recreational motor vehicles or motorhomes within their property um, at any point, uh, staying overnight, they would need to request a special use permit through the city. So based on these changes, Staff recommends approval. Happy to answer any questions. Joe, uh, good job on bringing us up to date uh, on this issue. Uh, I read in uh, the printed report that uh, Bob Nichols, Commissioner Nichols, uh, has some uh, higher level of knowledge and involvement with this related to the BAAMT. Uh, Commissioner Nichols, could you? kind of re bring us up to speed as to your role with this organization and uh, how these changes uh, might be uh, serving the purpose. Uh, certainly, Chairman. Uh, the uh, theaters themselves, uh, first of all, my involvement in that area, I'm the president of the Branson Academy for the Advancement of Music and Theater. We just call it BAM. It's a lot less right. Right. So as a president of BAM, I represent about 42 theaters, or excuse me, a dozen theaters and about 42 different shows. In our conversations, uh, it was discussed and pretty widely accepted that uh, it's an industry standard, kind of a normal way to operate a theater, to allow traveling acts, contracted acts, to spend the night in their luxury coaches in our parking lots. <clears throat> the use of that being restricted to a single motor vehicle uh, was not uh, well accepted because frequently a traveling act doesn't sleep in the same coach with their band. That's just the basic explanation for that. The star has a coach, the band and crew have a coach. I see. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a challenge with that having been restricted to one. Uh, limiting it to only three occurrences a year and the maximum of seven days was also too limiting for the normal operation of the theater. The theater is going to have concerts in which they have contract acts of the level that travel in their own coaches. Three occurrences a year would not feed the kitty. Uh, theaters do not exist on three concerts a year. They've got to have more than that if that's the business they're in. So that was the basic objective uh, objection to that. And the changes that they made in this clearly took that into consideration and rectified them. And uh, as an industry, we don't have any challenge with this the way it's written. Thank you, Bob, for that good report. Uh, commissioners, do you have any questions of Commissioner Nichols uh, on this? And thank you for sharing your role in this organization. I'm not familiar with this organization. Is this somewhat new, Bob? Uh, yeah, uh, Rick, we just formed uh, in August. Uh, there was a study done by the Chamber of Commerce uh, with a company from England called Sound Diplomacy. They checked out our industry, our music and our theater industry here locally, and they made about uh, 15 recommendations to the city that would support and grow our live show and our music industry, which I think we can all accept is pretty vital to a healthy tourism economy here in Branson. Yes. Uh, I was contacted by a couple of members of our uh, city administration, a couple of elected officials, and also uh, our tax uh, tax entity that collects tourism taxes other than what the city collects. And they asked us to assemble a group of stakeholders that could respond to this study uh, and with support of the city could accomplish those goals and recommendations. So since August, we formed a 501c nonprofit organization, which is made up of music and theater and show stakeholders. Basically the people who pay the bills, keep the lights turned on, are responsible for taxes, et cetera. And we're working to take control of our industry and push it forward into the future for the benefit of our members and also our whole community. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I think it, it important that we know what uh, organizations we're dealing with, and that sounds like a, a very well thought out and well planned uh, effort. Thank you. Uh, could I make another comment on this amendment, uh, the code yes. amendment? As it reads, <clears throat> it doesn't limit theaters to having uh, these overnight stays in their vehicle to contracted acts. And as such, if I'm reading this properly, and Joel, you might weigh in on this, but the way it's written now, and <laughs> Forgive me for asking for less restriction and then for suggesting a possibility of more, but the way this reads now, anyone with the permission of the property owner, of course, could simply stay in two RVs in a theater lot year round. Am I correct? That's uh, how I without, read it. without restrictions on number of days or occurrences, that would be correct. So my uh, suggestion and uh, uh, I've had numerous conversations with folks downtown on this, but uh, what I had suggested early on, and I don't know that I spoke directly with you on this, Joel, and forgive me for that. That's the path I should have taken, I assume, at this point. But the idea was to have this available for contracted acts within the theater. If I own a theater on the Strip and I'd like my uncle and my aunt to live in an RV on the property, the way this is written, it appears to me that I could allow them to overnight without restriction in an RV in my property and they don't have to be working in the theater. That I think is not the intent, uh, as you pointed out. Uh, and I think there is some pressure for that uh, in a tangential uh, experience we went through with the uh, individual applicant who wanted to house workers, uh, some of the cast members of the, of the uh, show uh, on site in trailers that were less than what this is calling for here. But I think there is some pressure for those sorts of stays to happen. And so to define that through the use of the language of, you're saying contracted acts, meaning the theater has a contract with a performer and that performer comes with two coaches or so and they stay there, their, their stay and they do that repeatedly over the over the year many times as they need to, uh, but they have to be contracted. And is, is, is that 
what you're saying. That is what I'm suggesting. Yes, that that because we we requested that this that our theaters be brought into compliance by allowing them to have contracted acts spend the night in their parking lots. Uh, that it appears that by opening it up this way, we're not limiting it to contracted acts. Yes. Uh, Joel, could you uh, uh, or Chris Lebeck uh, respond to that uh, addition, that additional component of restriction Commissioner Nichols is recommending and how that might be enforceable? Well, first, uh, that's the beauty of the way the, the use and structure standards are set up is, is we have that ability to add those um, additional restrictions to each, uh, each use type uh, theater here. So the simple suggestion from staff would be to have a uh, Roman numeral two and to add the caveat um, for overnight parking of recreational vehicles or motor homes uh, that they, they shall be a contracted act of that theater, uh, just as Commissioner Nichols had stated. And as far as enforcement goes, um, uh, if Chris has any other thoughts, but my initial one off the cuff hearing this um, just now for the first time would be uh, if, if there were an issue um, that code enforcement was made aware of, that their primary would be to first make contact with those staying in, in the recreational vehicle um, and, and know why they're there and who they are. Um, and if they're unable to do that, then they would obviously contact the property owner um, and explore it further. And we would hope that the property owner would be well aware of people staying on their property. I'll chime in on that too. Joel is correct. We have had this problem before with people, we'll say randomly parking their recreational vehicles on various properties throughout the city. And we have taken enforcement action on them specifically a trespass action um, through our municipal court. So there are vehicles to handle that scenario. Uh, but I concur with Joel, if this is a concern, then we should look at uh, a member of the commission making a motion to make an amendment to what's before them um, to add in that provision to make sure that the recreational vehicles are tied to contracted services of that facility, of that theater. Contracted services of that theater, Chris, is the language you would recommend? Yes. Uh, Chris, could I uh, suggest that perhaps we stick with acts instead of services? Does that not open it to construction workers and, or, or is there a problem with that? Uh, but no, that's, that's appropriate as well. Uh, so theater acts might be a better way to, to frame that. Uh, that, you know, that implies that they're actually a performer. Somebody that that's- is point of the overnight accommodations is to to take care of our performers so I appreciate that Chris would we need a definition addition for that Chris good question I am looking right now I apologize we're kind of doing this on the fly here but um, I'm looking to see how this is defined in code there's about five different places in our city code to look for this Theater. While he's looking for that, I have a question of Mr. Nichols. Um, do you believe your organization that will uh, abide by their wishes by making a change to this? I know they've been surveyed a couple of times and we haven't really received um, any feedback from the last um, survey. Do you think that that's what they want? Uh, yeah, I'm certain of it. We did call a member meeting. We had about 30 in attendance at our meeting, including the theaters that actively use or would use this code amendment. Uh, my language for what we were looking for actually came from those folks, specifically a uh, mansion theater, Dick Clark's theater, the people who have the type of, or have been having the kind of contract that actually stay overnight in their coaches. And they were not aware, uh, some of them, I think maybe Larry was because we've been discussing it since the incident came up with the Chinese at the former trial center, forgive me for not knowing the name of it. Um, so we've been talking about it since that time. Uh, why they don't respond to emails, I don't know. Uh, I do know that at our meetings, our members are passionate about this. They want to be in compliance. Uh, they don't want to be limited in such a way that they have to apply for special use permits to use the amendment that we're creating here. So um, uh, why they don't respond to email, I don't know. Perhaps those go to 
uh, marketing people or perhaps, I don't know if you haven't received responses before they get junked. <coughs> At the same time, I can testify that uh, our membership was very much involved in a very spirited conversation about this when it came up at our member meeting. Is this a, your membership too? Do they pay to be a part of this organization or is it a grassroots? How does that operate? Yeah, our members are paid members. We represent the entire industry, so we don't omit anyone from our websites and our advertising and our marketing. But the paid members are supporting members of our organization and they do get additional benefits within the organization for that. Are you a paid member of the organization as well? I'm not. I don't own a show or a theater, so I'm not an industry stakeholder per se. I'm the president of the organization and I'm not even a voting member of our board of directors. Chairperson Davis. Commissioner Howden. Yeah, um, a couple points. I've been receiving calls about this over the past few weeks. Um, I'm, I think that one of the answers is why people don't respond is there, as soon as this survey initially went out, um, you know, you have to understand the ideological makeup of this community and any kind of regulation generally is gonna be frowned upon. Um, so that when someone receives something like this, they don't understand. I think initially what we were talking about was getting people in compliance, that this already occurs. So we want to get it in compliance. Um, so to receive um, a letter asking you, you know, asking to, for the city to allow someone to do something that already occurs, I think that's where some of the um, non-responses came, came from. Um, I'm kind of concerned about the number one shall be located within an approved off-street parking area and to the side or rear of the primary structure. So one of the theater owners that called me today um, talked about some of the issues that they had when Rhonda Vincent came to this community. Um, Rhonda is a really well-known entertainer nationally, and we talk about this a lot. We want national entertainers to come to Branson. Part of what she did in her marketing, social media and otherwise, was said, hey, find our tour bus in town and you can get some special offer on your tickets. So she had her tour bus parked in the Walmart parking lot. She had her tour bus um, parked in Clay Cooper's theater. Um, and so when we talk about to the rear or to the back, um, I still think that should be something that should be left up to the theater owners. Um, again, and then even so, um, Rhonda Vincent might not be contracted with that specific theater but she may be an entertainer in town. So I, I'm looking at this from as myself as one commissioner. Um, I, I appreciate striking the limited to three occurrences per year. Um, I'm looking to make it as least restrictive as possible. That's what I've heard from the theater owners. Could I point out uh, briefly that the request, a requirement to locate these in off street parking areas into the rear or side is a subtext underneath overnight parking of the RVs. It should not preclude parking of the coach right in front of the theater during business hours or advertising hours. As to parking them in other people's lots to get advertising, I think that probably, uh, Joel, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe that is a, uh, a sign use or a mobile billboard use issue as opposed to uh, what we're trying to accomplish here as a camping. Uh, I don't know that that's, is there any restriction? Is there anything that keeps Rhonda from parking her uh, coach in the Walmart lot for two hours in the middle of the afternoon or whatever? So first I've gone back uh, to our initial slide um, there and it shows in chapter 86 that uh, right now today, recreational vehicles are allowed to park within businesses during their hours of operation. Um, so that will be unchanged through this process and would not prevent anybody with a motor coach or motor home or recreational vehicle from doing so. Um, what we are talking about is overnight parking. So parking within an establishment when they're not operating. Um, that's what this regulation is for. Uh, then to your, your other comment, Commissioner Nichols, um, that is something that was contemplated as we work through the changes to the sign code. Um, and what was eventually decided upon just being very kind of um, broad here, but um, the Supreme Court made it where cities cannot read signs. Um, so all we can do is regulate 
um, their size, their location, and duration. Um, so as long as a vehicle, whether that's a car or a bus or an RV, is parked lawfully um, within a parking lot, um, there, is, there is no problem with them doing so. Um, if they are parked on grass um, with the intent you know, to, to show signage and it wasn't approved to be there, um, then yes, that would be a violation of the sign code. But any vehicle lawfully parked, it would not be an issue. Marshall, did that kind of covers what you were bringing up yeah especially especially on what you had talked about bob um i'm comfortable with the clarification that during business hours they might be able to have it out out front you know um the second one that that's another topic but i'll, I'll leave that for now um, i'm comfortable with the first clarification thank you thank you joel you're welcome you, commissioners uh joel uh, chris can you uh, uh get comfortable with some language for a possible amendment please I sure can, Chairperson. Thank you. Um, I know it's never good to try to legislate on the fly, and we try to right. preclude us from doing that, but this is a pretty easy amendment. Uh, what I would recommend to kind of accomplish uh, the goals that I'm, I'm hearing is I would ask that somebody make a motion to amend in um, para, or, uh, item two, excuse me, Roman numeral two, which shall read, and I quote, shall be owned or operated by the performer, comma, entertainer, comma, or act performing at the theater. What that does is that encompasses any possible permutation of a stage act that is performing at the theater and it makes sure that that act, that performer or that entertainer is tied to those recreational motor vehicles. And again, by using the term act, um, we are also encompass uh, encompassing the situation where one of those uh, motor coaches may potentially be by the, you know, the, the backup band, if you will. So I think that covers all our bases that uses plain English um, so that there's no additional definitions that be gotcha. need to be added into code. So uh, just to re reiterate, we'd add a new Roman numeral two that shall read, and I quote, shall be owned or operated by the performer, comma, entertainer, comma, or act performing at the theater, period. Do I hear a motion for an amendment stating that language? Commissioner Nichols, I'll move for that uh, amendment stating the language that was read to us. Second, Pinkley. Thank you. We have a motion by Commissioner Nichols, second by Commissioner Pinkley. Does the commission have any further discussion regarding this motion for an amendment? Yes, Chairperson Davis, um, Denham. Yeah, I would just like dinner. to confirm with um, Director Hornicle, there is going to be no charge for this. As originally stated, it's just going to be the changes that are taking place tonight. So the, the just to be clear, the threshold is now instead of one, it's at two. So a theater um, is allowed or, or permitted with their use to have uh, up to two recreational motor vehicles or motor homes um, within their property. Um, during non-business hours. If they would like to have more than two at any point, they would be required to request a special use permit from the city. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions or discussions regarding the, amend the amendment to the motion? Hearing none, uh, we'd like uh, a roll call vote on the amendment. Planner Phillips. Thank you, Chairperson. An open vote. Commissioner Romine. Yes. Vice Chairperson O'Day. Yes. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Commissioner Howden. Yes. Commissioner Pinkley. Yes. Commissioner Lloyd. Yes. Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderwoman Denham? Yes. Vote is closed. Motion has carried. Thank you. And uh, Chairperson Davis, just so everyone's clear, I went ahead and added that language that we voted on, that you all voted on uh, to the chat so that Planner Phillips could properly record it uh, to the minutes. Okay, thank you. If you would like to refer to that, you can type your 
hit your chat button and it appears like magic. Hmm. All right. Very good. I think that was a good discussion. Thank you for coming well prepared, Commissioner Nichols, to help drive that through tonight and not make another month's or two delay on that. It was truly my pleasure. And I'd like to uh, thank the city staff uh, and this commission for being reactive to the needs of a segment of our community, our business community. Uh, we requested being brought into um, compliance and it might've taken a, a couple of tries, but I think that's the process and the process worked and I'm grateful and I'm grateful for everyone's work on this issue. So thank you all. Yes, I also want to thank uh, Joel and uh, for his work in this and uh, the planning department. And of course, I would also uh, ask that on many of these uh, areas where we are uh, trying to uh, certainly modify our practices and sometimes very unique to our community, that we put this on our calendar uh, of uh, reevaluation in a year, go back and see what we've done. Somehow, Joel, if you could or maybe we can uh, get the organization uh, to weigh in on it a, a year from now and say, hey, this is helping. Uh, we need further tweaking. Uh, we find some abuses, whatever it might be. I would like, uh, I would like us to kind of, you know, hold, hold us to our own accountability as well as our uh, mo willingness to modify. Bam would be uh, grateful for the opportunity to continue a dialogue with the city on issues pertaining to our industry. Great. Uh, Joel, that, and we are now at the point, I don't think we've voted actually on the amended motion. Have we? Uh, so we voted on the amendment, but we haven't voted on the item. Yes. So now I believe we do need a motion and a second to approve the uh, item number six request for municipal amendments to chapter 94 as amended. So moved. I have a motion from Commissioner Romine. Do I hear a second? Commissioner Lloyd will second. Second from Commissioner Lloyd. Further discussion on the amended motion. Chair, Chairperson Davis. Yes, Commissioner Pinkley. Uh, Joel, I wanted just to ask before we vote on this, if the, anyone has logged in or, or the community at oh. any point has any interest in speaking to this. Now we, you, uh, again, nobody has, nobody has joined in our, our waiting room to, to speak at this point. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us, Commissioner Pinkley. In that case, hearing none, uh, Planner Phillips, would you call the vote? Yes, thank you, Chair. Vote is now open. Commissioner Romine. Yes. Vice Chairperson O'Day. Yes. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Commissioner Howden. Yes. Commissioner Pinkley. Yes. Commissioner Lloyd. Yes. Chairperson Davis. Yes. Commissioner Nichols. Yes. Older woman Denham. Yes. Vote is now closed. Motion has carried. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners and staff. And at this point, we're at the near the close of our meetings. We have reports. Joel, do you have some reports for us tonight? Yeah, I just wanted to take this opportunity um, on behalf of staff to to make mention of uh, Commissioner um, Harris. Um, 25 years, almost 26 years is quite impressive. He replaced Sid Hain in June of 1995, um, and he was vice chair for four years, and, and I knew him always as Chairperson Harris, uh, filling that position for 12 years. Um, and it was a privilege to work with him. We always appreciated his, his interest and his, his energy. He also served on the Community Plan 2030's steering committee as the, the head of that. Um, between 2010 and 2012. Um, he, he cared a lot about the community and that always showed and he ran a great meeting. Um, some big shoes to fill, but we know uh, Chairperson Davis, you've done this before as well and look forward to working with you, but um, couldn't, go, couldn't go past without saying something about Commissioner Harris. Thank you very much, Joel. Yes, uh, 
Uh, Clark, uh, of course, is, uh, is a very good friend of mine, and we run together. We've run together since we were turned age 40, and uh, he's outrun me by many thousands of miles and uh, still can. Uh, so uh, I, I hope that uh, in your, in your uh, thoughts as a director of the planning department that you'll uh, do some sort of a letter or something to him. No, I'm sure he wouldn't. Uh, he doesn't want to come to talk. He doesn't want uh, a trophy, but I think it would be nice if uh, you write a letter or we, we sign it or we all individually at least maybe send him a thank you for all those years because he did a, an outstanding job. Absolutely. Would we, not, would we not give him a plaque or something though? For 25 years is a long time. Yeah, we, 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 we wanted to. Um, uh, I know uh, Chairperson Davis said uh, he had no interest in something, but if you all are in favor, of it, we would definitely be as well. So I'm in favor. Mm -hmm. uh, I think mind. he's earned at least that. <laughs> Chairperson Davis? Yes? Yeah, you know, he was also a teacher at Branson High School and taught my brother. Um, he had left by the time that I was there. Um, but yep, fantastic guy. So if you do a plaque, then Commissioner Howden, do you do you remember the five P's? <laughs> I, I asked my brother. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Commissioner I did. O'Day might be able to weigh in on this one. You know, you know Sean did, have uh, him? We, we both had him and uh you're asking me to remember something for almost 30 years ago. So what the five C's are. <laughs> Come on, Chuck. I can remember and I'm older than you. No, Let you, me get you, you started. Know, you... Proper, prior planning. Prior planning. Prevents, Proper prior planning prevents, prevents poor, poor performance. performance. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was, hence, a he was a planning. Hence, he was a chairman of the planning commission for a long, long time. 25 years as commissioner. Yeah, I, you know, uh, I asked him, I said, would you come and accept a, uh, you know, we want to do something, Clark, for heaven's sakes. And oh, no, 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 no. But, you know, if it's out of my hands. It's up to you guys. So. <laughs> about, yes. Anyway, Joel, you can come up with something, I bet you. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, also want to mention uh, two other things. Uh, we did not receive any requests for our June meeting. Um, so everybody will have a reprieve. Take a month off. Um, we'll make sure we have some things for you in July, I'm sure. Uh, and then finally, as we did mention during our April meeting, uh, just wanted to put out there on the table for discussion uh, whether to continue on with virtual meetings or to return to in-person meetings. In person. <laughs> in person. I would concur. I'm good either way. Meetings. What did you say, Commissioner Nichols? I'm for in-person meetings, in -person? Okay. especially if that means a return to uh, in-person study sessions as well. Yeah. I agree with that. Okay. I, I have a question. Uh, this is Commissioner Lloyd, though. If, can we do a combination of both if there happens to be a need for uh, a quorum that someone couldn't be there, but they could be here remotely? And if you're on a so, trip and not able to be there personally, can you join in remotely? I would like to maybe see that option. That would be awesome. I know our IT department is working on facilitating the public and applicants to join in-person meetings virtually or um, via phone call or video, what have you. Um, that's something we can look into. Um, uh, I don't know if Chris has any thoughts about that for, for members themselves. Yeah, well, from a legal standpoint, that's 100% permissible. Um, a lot of jurisdictions do that already. Um, I'm looking to the, I call, call it the mothership at the city of Springfield. That's how they currently operate their planning commission meeting. So you have the opportunity to attend virtually if uh, the need compels you to do so. So again, from a legal standpoint, it's 100% permissible. From a logistical or otherwise standpoint, I'll leave that to those experts. Attorney Lebec, I might suggest that when you refer to Springfield as the mothership, you might change that to the queen mothership. Thank you. I was making a Dan Patrick ESPN reference for those of you that um, I'm dating myself with that one. <laughs> well, it sounds like that the uh, commission is in favor of going back to meeting at the city hall, Joel. 
noted, and we will work with IT about um, any opportunities for people to join us virtually, whether commissioners or the public. I like that idea that Commissioner Loy had as well. If that can happen, great. I think having an extra month to give us time will, will be beneficial in looking into that. All right, then. Do we have anything else for the good of the cause? Nothing from staff. Anything from the commission? I would like to say thank you and express my gratitude to our new chairman uh, and our vice chairman for stepping up to uh, chair this committee. And of course, I join my voice with everyone's in thanking Chairman Harris for his uh, past service to our city and our commission, and also his continued service at the park board. Yes. Thank you. Person. Then, uh, yes, uh, Commissioner uh, Bakley. I would like to echo Commissioner Nichols' comments uh, rather than repeat them all. Uh, I echo that, uh, and it goes, <clears throat> even further on uh, uh, Clark because he does more than than I think has even been mentioned here tonight for our community and <clears throat> excuse me I just like to recognize him for all of those efforts beyond just being an outstanding uh, chairperson for this commission and I thank him and 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 thank you commissioner or chairperson Davis and vice chair uh, for signing on. Yes. Without further ado then, Chair would entertain a motion for adjournment of this meeting on May 4th, 2021. So moved, Commissioner Howden. Thank you, Commissioner Howden. Second? Second, O'Day. Second, O'Day. Thank you, Commissioner O'Day. Those in favor? Uh, let's see, do we need a roll call vote for this? Please. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Minor Phillips, you're Thank on. You. Yes, sir. Commissioner Romine? Yes. Vice Chairperson O'Day? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Commissioner Howden? Yes. Commissioner Pinkley? Yes. Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Chairperson Davis? Yes. Commissioner Nichols? Yes. Alderwoman Denham? Yes. Vote is closed. Motion is carried. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Meeting